This is the all-new Creality K1C. The C stands for carbon, which means it can also support printing with carbon fibre reinforced filaments. The K1C is designed to be fast, with speeds up to 600mm per second, and easy to use with its built-in smart features. The K1C builds upon the K1 3D printer, with new enhancements such as the extruder with metal feed gears, the included AI camera for monitoring and time-lapse of prints, an air filter with a replaceable active carbon cartridge, and the steel-tipped tri-metal unicorn nozzle that reaches temperatures of 300 degrees. Giving it a solid and clean modern look, the frame of the K1C 3D printer is made from a die-cast aluminium alloy. This is enclosed with acrylic panels at the sides, a plastic top lid, and a glass-hinged front door with a magnetic latch. Having the enclosure is good to keep a controlled internal temperature, which is perfect for printing demanding filaments like ASA, ABS or nylon. For other filaments like PLA, the top lid is removable, and it's recommended to remove the top when printing low temperature filaments if the chamber reaches over 30 degrees. The top lid is attached with magnets in two opposite corners, and a press fit, and this attaches a little too well. It can be challenging to remove at times, so I found pressing it up from the inside works best. At the front of the K1C we have a USB port for plugging in a USB stick with prepared sliced files. All the files can be directly loaded over to the machine via Wi-Fi and stored on the internal memory. On the machine the files are accessed via the responsive 4.3 inch colour touchscreen or controlled through the software on a PC. The user interface is easy to navigate on the touchscreen. We can control the printer, start prints and view settings and the print progress. When using the touchscreen to start a print, it's good to see there's a 3D model of the object on the screen, which makes it easy to select the correct file for printing. At the back of the printer, there's a removable spool holder, filament runout sensor, the power connection, the power switch, and there's the exhaust fan with the active carbon air filter. Taking a look inside the K1C, we have a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters which is enough room for small to medium sized models. The print bed platform is kept level and stable with three lead screws, resulting in accurate layers when printing. On the bed we have a magnetic flexible build plate with a single sided smooth PEI print bed surface. The flexible plate makes it easy to remove 3D printed models once they cool, simply by flexing it and removing the printed part. Reinstalling is easy as it has two handy alignment screws to ensure it's always put back into the correct position. It's a good build plate and applying a thin layer of glue stick works well as an interface between the model and the surface. The build plate has a silicon rubber nozzle wiper attached which is used to help clean the nozzle at the start of prints. One concern was whether if other plates would work without the silicon nozzle wiper. So to test this we removed the two alignment screws and this allowed other build plates to fit. Other plates like this textured PEI plate and even installing a thicker piece of glass worked. The printer automatically adjusted for these plates and worked fine without any changes needed. The bed is AC heated which heats up quickly and it reaches a maximum temperature of 100 degrees. This print bed is fully automatic, unlike older printers where you need to make adjustments for the Z offset or adjust bed levels manually. So there's nothing to touch and the K1C takes care of the complete process of the bed leveling to ensure perfect first layers. Now if you still need to adjust the Z offset, this can be done through the menu on the touch screen, found under the expert menu. Filament is loaded onto the rear spool holder and then the filament is fed through the runout sensor and through into the Teflon tube into the extruder. While this setup takes up space at the back, it does help the printer look neat and tidy. But if you'd rather the filament spool placed at the side, there's an included file to print a separate spool holder, which will print and install later to the side of the printer. Now the Teflon tube is routed through the cable chain to protect it and keep it neat and tidy. And the filament feeds into the dual gear direct extruder. The extruder has a locking switch on the top to lock and unlock the gears, which makes it super easy when changing filaments. 
To add filament, we need to unlock the extruder by pushing the lever to the unlock position. Then push filament all the way through the tube up into the extruder of the printer and relock the extruder. Then on the touch screen, press on extrude. Changing filament is just as easy and on the touch screen, press retract and let the hot end heat up. Let the printer automatically retract the filament, then unlock the extruder and remove the remainder of the filament. Filament is melted by the hot end which is equipped with a newly developed ceramic cartridge heater and it comes with a 0.4mm nozzle installed. This reaches a maximum temperature of 300 degrees for printing more demanding filaments. The K1C has a tri-metal unicorn nozzle and this has a titanium alloy heat break and the nozzle is made of copper with a durable steel tip which allows it to print abrasive filaments. The 3D printer combines a nimble core XY motion with a lightweight printhead for less motion of inertia and this allows it to achieve impressive speeds of up to 600 millimetres a second. For cooling, a large fan on the printhead with air ducts cools down the freshly printed layers, plus an additional internal side fan adds to the cooling. Although the additional part cooling fan and the rear exhaust fans are a bit loud when on full speed. There's a small camera located on the inside top corner and the AI camera can watch for print failures, foreign objects, debris and the camera is also used for monitoring of prints which can be viewed in the software or remotely on a mobile device. A really handy built-in feature, especially if you're away from the printer. During a print, the camera will also capture time-lapse footage of the model printing which are stored in the internal memory. These files can be exported from the 3D printer and viewed. Inside there's also some LED lights and these are great for lighting up the internals allowing us to see what's being printed. The lights can be turned on or off when needed, either from the touch screen or remotely in the software. Taking a look at the unboxing, the printer comes pre-assembled and is almost ready to go. Now the first thing we find is the handy unpacking steps which outline the order to help you unpack the printer. Removing the top cover, we find a sticker sheet and the installation manual. Next we find the plastic cover which fits on top of the printer. There's a bit more foam packaging to remove and the printer is lifted out of the box. Packed inside the printer we find the power cable, the air filter cartridge assembly which attaches to the back of the printer, the door handle with mounting hardware and inside we also find an accessory box that contains the touch screen, a spool holder, unclogging tool, side cutters, a plastic scraper, spanner, a tube of metal grease, a glue stick, allen keys, screwdriver and bolts, a rubber strip, USB stick and a 200 gram roll of hyper white PLA filament to get you started printing. There's a bit more unpacking to do with plenty of protective plastic to remove around the printer. Now it's also good to see the glass door even has protective rubber corners for shipping. Once all the plastic and foam is removed, inside there's three transport screws to remove off the bed platform and these are clearly marked with yellow arrows. And these just simply unscrew and are removed with the included allen keys. A few easy steps are needed for the assembly. The door handle is installed and bolted onto the front glass door. The touch screen has a connection port for the ribbon cable that is plugged in. Then the screen slides into the slots on the front of the frame. The air filter with the air cartridge is installed and pressed into the slots of the back of the printer. The spool holder is attached to the back of the printer and twisted to lock into place. Now the next thing to do is install the foam rubber strip inside the top lid. One other thing you'll notice on the K1C is the rubber feet are now attached so they won't fall off when you're moving your printer. On the build plate we just need to peel off the plastic protective cover. Then on the side of the printer check the power supply is set to the correct voltage and adjust if needed. At the back plug in the power cable and the printer is switched on. On the initial first power up the printer will run through the setup process. Then the self diagnosis system will check and test the printer's operation. This will test the fans, the hot end and the heating print bed circuit. Once this is complete, the input shaping control is carried out via acceleration sensors to optimise the tuning and print quality. 
The printer will then measure and set the print bed level automatically. Now there's one last piece of foam to remove and all that's left to do is to load some filament and the printer is ready to go. For the first print, we're printing the included speed test that comes pre-sliced and ready to print. This speed test is printed at 600 millimeters per second with the white hyper PLA filament. When seeing the K1C 3D printer in action for the first time, it's insanely quick. The speed test is completed in nine minutes and the final print quality is great. The next pre-sliced file is the Benchy Boat and this is printed with the included Hyper PLA sample. It's a good first test print to check and confirm the printer is working well. The finished boat printed in 17 minutes and the final print turned out well. To test out more prints, we'll slice them in the included software. The Creality Print software is easy to use and from here we can prepare and slice 3D models for printing. There are default presets for slicing files which I found work well and these can be customised and adjusted by adding and editing new profiles. Once we have a model sliced as a G-code file, it can be sent directly to the K1C over Wi-Fi. The file is then stored on the 3D printer and it's good not having to move files from a PC to the printer with an SD card or a USB drive. Within the software, we can control and monitor the one machine or multiple 3D printers making it easy to send jobs and watch over multiple printers from the one screen. With the file sent to the printer, we can select the 3D printer on the network and start the print. In the software, we can see specific printing information, temperatures, and watch over the print via the camera inside the printer. The next print is a print in place helicopter, and this is printed in one piece and it has blades that rotate. And this is printed with the blue hyper PLA filament. With the print removed from the build plate, all the pieces move freely and the K1 produced an impressive print result. For the next print, we're using some PLA carbon fibre reinforced filament to make a functional part for the 3D printer. The 3D printer comes with two optional side mount spool holders that are already pre-sliced. These files can be found in the printer's menu and these are selected on the touch screen and printed with the PLA carbon fibre. The carbon fibre reinforced PLA is a material with excellent strength, stiffness and a nice matte surface finish. With the part complete, it's removed from the build surface by flexing the build plate. The part looks good and it's bolted onto the side of the printer and then the spool holder is twisted into place. This next print is of a twist container model and this is printed with blue hyper PLA at 300 millimeters per second. The Creality hyper PLA is designed for high speed printing and faster cooling while retaining high precision. I found this gives excellent results with the default profiles in the software and removing it from the build plate was made easy by gently flexing it around the edges and lifting it off. The finished print turned out well and the hyper PLA produces a clean, strong and high quality print. Now another handy feature, if you're printing a batch of parts at once and one part happens to fail for any reason, there's the option to exclude the failed part and continue with the remaining parts from the batch. We just need to select the failed part on the screen to exclude it and continue printing with the remainder parts. After using the K1C, I found it to meet expectations with its speed and print quality. It's an excellent printer that looks great and works perfectly out of the box. It's easy to set up great for small to medium sized prints and for making rapid prototypes. At full speed the fans are a bit loud but it's a small compromise compared to all the benefits this printer gives. It's an easy to operate machine and the included Creality Print software is user friendly for slicing models, remote monitoring and being able to send files via Wi-Fi to the printer is another big plus. Overall I'm impressed with the K1C's usability, build quality, prints produced and the print speed that saves time. It's well suited for beginners or advanced users looking for a high quality, fast and easy to use 3D printer.